my kid, it, he's just entering into terrible twos. Like I can tell he's just like frantic. Um, but his favorite thing is to do is to forage. Like he just needs to forage through everything. He's like, we'll go to the park and instead of playing on the swings or, or the monkey bars or whatever, uh, or go down the slide, he just wants to sit by a tree and just like pick through the acorns. And he's like, well, that's a good one. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. He's like mumbling to himself. So I don't know if it's like he in inherited some of the psychopath from me or oh. <laughs> what's going on there. But um, does he collect them? Yeah, he'll he'll have a whole handful of acorns and he'll just hold them and it's really cute. He's like. This one, hold the acorn, hold it, hold it. Uh, Get your pocket books ready because he's gonna want all the Pokemon cards. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, he's definitely gonna be a collector. But um, what, like, he'll do that at home too. Like, he'll want to dig in the trash can and just like want to forage everywhere he possibly can. And since he's already foraged ninety percent of the house, he's always looking for new places to forage and dig and scratch. And um, so he gets in the timeout because he he goes dumpster diving a lot. So. Mm. See, I, I just think when it comes to like punishments and those sorts of things, you have to be flexible and you can't have such hard and fast rules yeah. because every kid is their own like unique being and they have different things that they give different currencies to. So um, like you, you also see there's so many freaking parenting experts now. Like m <laughs> my wife came up to me the other day and she was like, we can't use the words time out anymore because this expert says that using the words time timeout makes them feel excluded and we don't want our kids to feel excluded. So I, I, I have a friend who calls them time ins, which we don't go that far, oh but they call them time ins, where they're like, no, you're included with us. You're just sitting calmly. It's, wow. it, but there's so many opinions out there that you have to figure out, like um, my oldest uh, is an introvert. So to give him time to himself is a blessing. Yeah. <laughs> so why, but our, one of my other kids is an extrovert. So that's an awful punishment for him to sit by himself. But for Olsen, he's like, okay, cool. I'll go sit. Yeah, that sounds great. So hmm. you have to kind of treat every kid differently, but also evolve as things evolve too. You can't just have those hard and fast black and white rules all the time for their entire life or they'll find ways around them. Yeah, I'm curious because you were talking about like setting those guidelines and I'm curious for Matt, um, do you ever like, and maybe this is just coming from the teacher in me, mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've never parented a child on my own, but I can say that I've been in a classroom for, with about 30 of them for, you know, sun up to sundown, well, no. It's like, I guess, 7 to 2.30, whatever. But, I mean, that's a long time with yeah. a bunch of kids. And they always talk about, like, if you want to be a good teacher, you have to have a set schedule and keep them to that schedule to keep them from, you know, getting into trouble and doing things that they shouldn't be, be doing. Does that uh, also convert into being a good parent? Like, do you have, like, a set schedule for, like, daily routines? So I... I... I'm pretty sure I struggle from OCD pretty bad. <laughs> pretty sure I do. Okay. I mean, I think, you know, Mike's been with me this weekend. I think we're he complete can... opposites yeah. in that. I'm a roll with the punches kind of guy. He's a, I we were structure. texting when we were packing to come here. He goes, I've already packed my bag 30 times. He said something like that. I got to make sure. And I was like, I'm packing like five minutes before I go to the airport. <laughs> yeah. I, I, whereas I am kind of a free spirit in a lot of things. There's a lot more things I need structure in. Um, and I think, so it, it, that's my parenting style, but I also feel like there's a lot of benefits to having a set structure for, for my son. So like, you know, he wakes up at a certain time, eats at a certain time, goes to bed at a certain time. And I can see that like his body's ready to eat at a certain time. He's ready to sleep at a certain time. And it's really, really great for, for our life because we know what to expect from him. And we'll see a lot of parents with like screaming kids because we know that they're tired and they're over or they're overly hungry and they're not getting what they need. Um, and, uh, you know, I did used to work in foster care and adoption and I have done some, some studies on childhood development and like trauma informed care and stuff like that. And I feel like when kids have structure, they have security and when mm -hmm. they have security, they have confidence and when they have confidence, you know, they have self-esteem and those things stem from each other. Uh, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm super meticulous and it needs to be exact timings. Like we have some fluctuation there, but I feel that, uh, child uh, maturity and, and, and child growth is best, uh, you know, is best handled within a structure. It grows on the lattice of structure. Like I'm over here, professor over here, professor, <laughs> professor Miles Morales over here. <laughs> but, uh, no, I think that I, I think I've seen the, the, the rewards of it. Like my son started walking earlier. He's, he's been, he speaks in almost complete sentences. He's not even two years old. You know, he's, I think he's 
uh, advanced from those things and from the way that we've trained them. Not saying those two necessarily correlated because I know every kid's different, but I, I think he does he grows well in that in that environment. Yeah, if and if your goal was to impress me, I am impressed. <laughs> And this is why my wife is a complete blessing because she always reminds me. She goes, we are not raising children. We are raising adults. Yeah. Yeah. We're raising good yeah. adults. Right. And you have to emulate the type of person that you want your child to be. You can't expect a child never to use an iPad or a phone when you're on your phone all the time. <laughs> like th Ooh. they want to be like you. Yeah. So if you're somebody who gossips about people behind their back, guess what your kid's probably gonna feel like it's okay to do. If you're somebody who fights a lot and yells at people a lot, guess what your kid is likely to do? It's really, really hard to look at ourselves in the mirror sometimes. And a spouse is a really good way to activate that where they can call you out on things and tell you how to be better at things in a loving way. Like my wife lovingly calls me out about being on my phone around our kids a lot because like, I don't want our kids to, to want to just watch stuff all the time. And we can't be that person then. So it's really, really hard to accept those things that we have to get better at because we can't have a double standard with our kids. Otherwise, they're going to grow up thinking other things are double standards. Why would my kid want to live a faith that I have if I'm not living other things in my life well? Man. Yeah, that's so good. I know, like last episode, Maddie was on talking about how a lot of times we say, oh, boys will be boys. But he's like, the truth is, boys will be men. Yeah. Yeah. And so if you don't like get that in your mind early on, like before you know it, they're already going to be influenced by older teenagers, uh, you know, older boys than them. And that's where they're going to get what it means to be a man and then you're, you're gonna lose your influence on them and it's gonna be too late hey y'all we hope you love this conversation here at young married christian we are on a mission to see a gospel-centered home made available for every single child in the foster care system there are 400,000 kids in the foster care system and there are 400,000 churches in america wow that is crazy this is absolutely a solvable problem and we want to be a part of it. If you want to join us in that mission, text the word FREEDOM to 833-370-1610. 833-370-1610. 833-370-1610. And another thing you can do that is really helpful is to smash the like button on this video. Smash it like Satan's face. Crush it like it's Lucifer's head. It really helps us a ton. So smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. That's it. <laughs> smash the like button on this video.